And yeah, if, if instead of Adam and Eve, it was Adam and Eve and um, Rupert and Rowena, then then the great uh, counter would be well. That means you forced. Um, that means you either. You, it means you forced inbreeding. What, but away from reproductive sex with the parents. Um, and, and then that would bear out in the psychiatric reports of criminality. Why I find that why I find those laughable is that it's whatever implicit in a religion, um, but lo but uh, logically necessary and implicit. For instance, in Genesis, the book of Genesis in breeding is implicit and logically necessary and concealed by things like anti-feminism, anti-women's rights, and uh, apples, the consumption of apples being uh, submitted as something more appropriately deemed an original sin than the disgust of inbreeding, which science already knows is is what bails a, a species out of existence. Um, and, you know, back then they weren't providing adequate amounts of helmets for their, for their inbred young. Um, I, f I think if upon birth they even looked distressing to the parent, they were throwing them against stones and rocks to, to kill them. Uh, but you do your own research and share your findings with me. But yeah, it's whatever. So when the Christian media does a, a, a crime story, what's always a point of the, uh, suspense and uh, drawing a, this fake applause out of you is that, yeah, they go, well, so they've already taken over in breeding enough with this Adam and Eve story and ma making it inexplicit. Um, while suggesting that Ice Cube's lyrics are too explicit, that they require a warning label on every CD, um, is that they then go and go, well, this criminology report on the press, uh, no court would let the public hear it, so we'll do some coverage with our Rupert Murdoch handshaking media company and go... Um, did this person have any siblings? If you can find one or more siblings, let's make an incestuous moment argument. Yeah, and why does that seem to make sense? Well, it will, it will seem to make potential sense to anyone, anyone who is not an opponent of the Christian religion, uh, as well as accepting a bunch of logical fallacies like post hoc ergo propter hoc the Latin for after this, therefore because of this. Uh, it's like saying, you know, in kindergarten you were known to have used crayons. Uh, in mental health facilities people often use crayons when drawing, so we therefore think that after you went over the age you disassociatively became discriminatory towards all persons of said to have a mental illness, um, as evidenced by your non-use of crayons, their, non their use of crayons, and your um, sitting still, because that's when the minds of supernaturalists really move and they think they've made you say yes. Uh, it's, it's one pathetic thing I've noticed about them. Uh, they don't even clarify that they've ask you a yes or no question, they talk around one, and if you stand still, they think you've answered yes to them. Um, yeah, so I'm in favor for more talk about how and, and see, while Sam Harris is not an opponent to the idea of an afterlife either, but let's be categorically uh, honest with ourselves about what this means. 
And what it means, in all fairness, is that it's about an existence beyond this one. And what that immediately means is that, no, you're not going to... If it's been orchestrated by any kind of supernatural being or if it's a domain or an, an environment to live after we've died, this supernatural being is not going to confuse us with various emissaries who are indistinguishable from... Um, who we can't tell apart from a psychic, any psychic with a deck of tarot cards or a crystal ball or a, um, a book of spells or anything like that to politicize and tell us, well, uh, these are the terms for the afterlife. So if you behave in this way, you'll get in. And if you don't, you won't. It's uh, That's all retarded, I think. And um, so an agnostic... An ag uh, agnostic in the in the original Huxleyan sense will say there can't be any knowledge about an afterlife, and that e extends to you saying if you smoke um, if you smoke Winfield cigarettes, you'll go to heaven, but if you smoke um, uh, Bond Street cigarettes, you'll go to hell. It's really a, it's a, it's irrelevant, that, and that, uh, the efforts to politicize an afterlife are irrelevant. Um, so the only charge I can think of them saying is, well, aren't you telling everyone that their judgment... Well, I'm trying to say they're already in a poor state of affairs if they can't see why being nice to somebody doesn't have merit on its own accord than going, I'm going to be nice to you because, so that God will give me a blowjob in the next life. It's... um. I'm nice to people because I enjoy the celebration of good manners, not because uh, I want your God to give me a blowjob in the next life. Um, so ethics, eth the utility of ethics, you should think about observing for both for good and bad reasons so that you can... Uh, otherwise, what's your what's your gauge for if someone is betraying you or fucking you over? Like, uh, you just keep going on being nice to them without an end. Oh well, they've broken one of my legs, but I just I'm going to keep being nice to them so I get the blowjob from God in the next life. I really want the blowjob from God in the next world, in the life to come. Uh, at some point, you're you're supposed to be able to implement your own limits, put your foot down and say enough's enough. You know you've wronged me on this front, on this front, on this front, on this front, etc. I'm in contest with you until this matter's resolved. Uh, get your shit together, etc., etc. So the utility and the scope of ethical behavior um, is, is absolutely able to be discussed and and, and quantified here during this life here on earth. And in addition to that, it's impeded against by getting told in con in contradiction to the principle of all the childhood stories we were ever read when any guardian ever asked us to try to guess the morals of the story. Uh, is it been, are they been, and our moral attunements being contradicted by their suggested con contingencies to supernatural theological stories about uh, how Gary Cairns has an, an eternal anus and Roger Tall an, an eternal chode so that their intercourse will endure beyond the death of both their wives. And fuck Freemasonry. <laughs>